Welcome to Exploring the Arts. I'm Ed Cawley, your host. Today we're in Ipswich on Maple Street, where Paul George has his studio, probably one of the finest painters in this particular area. We're going to go in and we're going to explore his watercolors, his oil paintings, and even some of his charcoal drawings. So come on in. Let's explore Paul's world. Follow me. And watch your step. Uh, hey, hi, Paul. How are you? Thanks for inviting me to uh, your studio I didn't today. You. <laughs> you didn't invite me. <laughs> well, I just barged in, yeah, okay? Come on Good in. to see you. Look around. Yeah. Did you bring your checkbook? I did. <laughs> Again, Paul, thank you for inviting me. And I just want to ask you to start out uh, about your interest in art. Why did it start? How did you get involved? Uh, where did you go to school? Uh, what's your background, so to speak? Well, uh, I didn't start painting till I was 50. So I think from an inspirational point of view for all the anybody mm -hmm. watching that thinks it's too late or they didn't want to do it. You know, I, I was in business. Uh, I had my own business for 30 years and uh, never painted in my life, really. Little things in mm -hmm. high school, but uh, <clears throat> my, my honest, honestly, it started, uh, I was on a trip with a bunch of friends and uh, getting hammered, drinking, <laughs> drinking pina coladas okay. down in, down in uh, I think it was Aruba. Uh, and seriously, I was on the beach drinking a pina colada, talking to my friends, and I looked out and I saw this beautiful green water, uh, amazing. And I said, boy, I wish I could paint. Just, you mm -hmm. know. And one of the fellas I was with, Bob, uh, started telling me that he painted watercolor. And it sounded wonderful, you know. And one of the things he said to me was, you know, it's something you can do till you're 90. And that, it was just like, wow, that's a wonderful thing, you know. You're so, almost 90 now. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize it was going to go by so fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, that, that's really, uh, you know, so I said, well, did you bring your paints? And he said, no. So we, uh, we actually jumped in a cab and we drove around the island looking for paints. We found an office store and we purchased... Uh, those little kid sets, you know, the mm -hmm. six or eight. Sure, circles. little trays of watercolors, yeah. yeah. And, and a couple, and a block of paper. And I did my first watercolor. And uh, interesting, uh, I always say I learned by accident, but I was sitting on this chaise lounge at the edge of the ocean. And we painted for a few hours. You know, I thought I was Andrew Wyatt. I was mm -hmm. painting every little nook and cranny on those rocks and sitting in. You know, you get right in the zone. You don't mm -hmm. even pay attention to what's going on right. around you. And the tide was coming in. And after a few hours, uh, this wave came in. It wasn't a big wave, but it it, it hit me. You know, it jumped. And it, it startled me. And I jumped. And, and the painting I was doing that I had been working on for two hours flipped over, landed face down on the ocean. And I was like, oh, no. You know, I'm not going to paint it I couldn't believe yeah, it. This is it. But I picked it up, and it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. I looked at it. I couldn't believe it. The water had washed away all I did. You know, it just, it, it didn't really wash it away, but it, it loosened the painting up, mm -hmm. and I couldn't believe how beautiful it looked, you know? And I still have it. I was going to ask you that. I, I, still, I, have I still have it. I'm not sure where yeah. it is, but yeah. I'll see if I find yeah. it. But I still have it, and... Uh, I had it in my gallery one day. I was telling uh, this fellow that story. He offered me twelve hundred dollars for that painting, which I, your I, very first painting. Yeah, I wish I knew where he was because I'd call <laughs> yeah, him. <laughs> yeah, like that. No, I I, uh, yeah. I didn't sell it, but I it was great. And, and what did you say to yourself? Uh, well, boy, this is easy. Or? No, I just loved it, you yeah. know. And I always liked art, and so I I was still working a lot of hours at the time. So. I really didn't get into painting a lot. I did started to do weekends with him. We we got together weekends, and uh, I would do paintings with him. But I did a lot of reading. I loved, I loved all the American painters, especially you know Homer, Hopper, and uh, I fell in love with uh, John Sargent. Mm -hmm. You know Sargent's paintings. So I I read a lot, and then uh, just a, so I, I painted once or twice a month in the beginning. 
and then uh, eventually sold my business and started. So, so you're telling me that that one almost accidental thing that happened to you with your first watercolor that was enough to say, I'm going to sell my business and I'm going, oh, to, no. I'm going to concentrate no, I, on it. I didn't. I honestly had no plans on being a professional artist when I sold the business. I just, it was a hobby, mm -hmm. and that's all I was going to do. But uh, I w I've been blessed. I've been very fortunate uh, in this business. I, once I, uh, it's crazy. I took a few workshops, but I worked very hard at it. You know, I painted all the time. And when I started, I mean, I literally said to myself, uh, this is a job, and when I, what I would do is, you know, I, I love painting outside. That was one of the reasons I fell in love with painting. Uh, I really love plein air painting. So I used to leave my house at 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning, and I would get a cup of coffee and look for a place to paint, and I would paint every day till, you know, 4 or 5 o'clock, and that's what I did for a long time. Uh, and then I went to, uh, I really loved it so much, and once I sold my business, I had some time, and I wanted to get better, so I started taking <coughs> workshops with, with different artists, uh, and I also, I signed up for uh, a year at the Museum of Fine Arts School in Boston. I thought that would be something that would help a lot, uh, so I, I went there three days a week. Uh, I picked and choose my own classes because I didn't, I wasn't looking for credits or to graduate right. or anything like that. So uh, I could go for half the price at the time, and it was good. So that's that's how I started painting. That's interesting because that experience of going to the school and knowing that you weren't going there to get yeah. a degree, you were going there to learn, kind of uh, opens you up a little bit, doesn't it? Well, you're relaxed. You're, you're relaxed, not, you're not right. working. I, I mean, I worked hard at painting and drawing and taking all the classes, but you're not worried about taking exams or anything like that, getting grades. So you have this kind of freedom that yeah, a lot of students won't have. Like, you're not trying to please the professor. Right. You just want to learn. But I really learned by painting, and I think most people, you know, you can read and take sh workshops and so forth, but you really learn by working every day right. and making mistakes. and improving on, on those mistakes. So that's how I did it, and uh, it's amazing, but after, the, after one year of painting full-time, uh, I sold a couple of paintings to friends and mm -hmm. so forth. But uh, I wanted to go up to Gloucester. I was living in Winchester at the time, and I wanted to go up to Gloucester to um, paint. Uh, the light is beautiful up there. So I was looking for a place to rent for the summer, for you know, a month or two up there. And I ran into this uh, real estate agent, and she said, what do you do? And I told her, and so forth. So she looked at a couple of paintings I had with me in my car, and she said, oh, you should have a gallery. <laughs> I said, I've been painting one year, you know, uh, I don't know. So uh, she showed me these galleries on Rocky Neck, you know, which was... Uh, they were really beat up, and one one in particular, I loved it. You know, it was small, and you know, and I'm thinking, well, it was only three thousand dollars for the season, which is six months. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, this could work, and she showed me it, and there was a nine by twelve room out back, and it was, I, I actually, when I looked in the room, it was above the water, you know, and this is a true story. Yeah. I looked in the room. And there was a hole in the floor, and the water came up. And people, oh, I'm like, oh my God. What have I got myself into? Yeah, am I going to really? She said, yeah, you can live here for the summer. So, so I thought, well, you know, if I can uh, paint every day, put my paintings in here, and open up Saturday and Sunday, and if I could sell $3,000 worth of paintings, then I'm, I'm here for the summer free, and it's mm -hmm. great. You know, so that, that's what I thought I'd do. And then uh, I brought a friend of mine in we, with a spray gun. We sprayed the whole place about four times, all white. <laughs> it was beautiful. And I started getting excited about it because I'd never really shown my work. And uh, we fixed the place up, put some nice lights in, and I, I started getting really excited. I did a lot of painting, and I framed everything I had. And 
I was planning this big opening, which I did, and in the first two weeks, I sold $22,000 worth of paintings. $22,000? $22,000. So that really <coughs> excited me. I really, you know, I couldn't believe it. I, I still, that was just, I just felt, well, I'm blessed. This is, you know, God's way of telling me uh, you should be a painter. So I loved it, and that makes you more excited, you know, when you really can make some money at it. So that's how I... Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about some of your paintings over sure. here. Sure. Um, this watercolor here with the snow. Yeah. Tell us how that how you were inspired to do this particular piece. I love the lighting on it. Yeah. I uh, it was a snowstorm, obviously. <clears throat> I went outside. Uh, I think it was about seven o'clock in the morning. You were outdoors painting this. This isn't a not. I didn't paint that. I okay. did that for a photo, but. Okay. Uh, I did a uh, quarter sheet of it then, which I've sold, uh, but it was beautiful. And the light, the way, the, well, that, that's, you can see how beautiful that light is hitting that bush. And that's a, an unusual situation because the bush was frozen first. It was covered with ice, and then we had a snowstorm. So the snow was on top of the ice, and it created this amazing shape and just beautiful sense of light. And that, that's what... Ultimately, painting is always about the light. You know, it's always about creating a path of light. It's beautiful, so yeah. <clears throat> very sensitive painting there. You can see the bushes are holding up this very heavy snow. Yeah. And you really were able to capture that uh, yeah. that weight of the snow on those bushes. Yeah, it's a really nice. And I like the way in the background you have the background beyond the bushes kind of act as a foil to bring that light just even suggestion, forward. Yeah. yeah, just a suggestion. And even in the core, you can see in the core of the bush there uh, how warm that is and how deep, you know, deep, dark, warm mm -hmm. that to, to contrast against the, the cool light, you know. Just. I want to discuss, you told me an interesting story about this painting I'd like you to tell our viewers. The, one of the reasons I like this, uh, it's interesting, I was with my wife Katie, who, who was also a wonderful painter. Anyway, we were uh, out painting all day, and we were, it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we were leaving, and we were driving down this road in Essex, that's Bray Road in Essex, and watch, we, I was just looking at the way the sun was going through the bushes and the trees and so forth, and I drove by these rocks. And uh, I stopped, and we get out, and I wanted to do a watercolor, and, and Katie was like, gee, I don't know, it doesn't look like much. But uh, I did this, and uh, I just love that spot. I love the deep warmth, again, of those, of those rocks. You know something else, so I know, you don't overpaint. Well, you know, the key... And not overwork is just... Yeah, the key about watercolor is the transparency, and... and and letting that light come through the paint, you know. But that little path leads you right into the painting, you know. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Beautiful composition there, and, and it's a natural composition. Nothing I, I created. Many times you have to, you know, move rocks or trees or put people in or buildings or suggest something to, to change it. But every once in a while, you get a natural composition that is created by nature. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. so... Now that you, was one. I understand you also won a gold medal in the New England Watercolor Society. I so, did. Is that correct? I did. I, you know, I, I wanted to submit this this year to the uh, American Watercolor Society. I mean, the New England Watercolor yeah. Society. Excuse me. So uh, they had a requirement of thirty. So I redid the painting. I it's, I did a much bigger size. Yeah. It's over here beside, mm -hmm. and uh, I redid <clears> it <throat> to fit their requirements. <laughs> I framed it, and got down there, and didn't even know it. I just assumed it would be okay because they told my frame thirty inches. But I get down there and it's thirty-one inches. If you measure it, it's inch. thirty-one and a half inches. <laughs> An and, inch and a half uh, too big. And they wouldn't let they they didn't allow it in. So. Yeah, this is an oil uh, I did up in uh, Stonington, Maine. Uh, just again, I just love the composition. It's uh, it's natural. I did I did eliminate a bunch of trees that were in the way to make it more open. But I love the I love the way the river uh, 
the dark water, you know, the reflection of those trees in the water and the way it leads you down into that, uh, into that brook, it's really beautiful. Again, you get the nice warm grasses against this cool, cold snow and so forth, so it makes a, it makes a nice contrast. I actually started, I told you the story, I started in watercolor and I stayed with watercolor for about 10 years, pretty much. And then uh, I met a fellow named Robert Cormier, mm -hmm. who is now dead, uh, but he was an amazing painter. He was a master portrait painter from Boston. And I wanted to start doing portraits and he, um, he suggested that I start doing some oils. So that's how I really began with oils, and I studied with him for about seven years in Gloucester, uh, doing portraits and figures. It was beautiful. So, so I don't have a preference. Uh, they're each, you know, they're each very beautiful. They, they each say different things, uh, and I think that I think really think the subject dictates to me mm -hmm. the medium that uh, that I'm going to use. In terms of, uh, you mentioned it a lot of times, you, you really prefer going out and being on site when you paint. Yeah. Uh, that's going to present problems in terms of lighting, in terms of uh, just the weather itself, in terms of the in the summertime, too hot, and mosquitoes and whatever. I mean, they're not problems, but they're, uh, they're elements that you deal with. And, you know, after a while, you don't even notice it. But, I mean, there's certain, like, you know, the sun is obviously moving. Mm -hmm. every, every two hours you have a different painting. But you learn to, um, you know, you learn how to deal with that and, and handle it right away. And generally, you don't want to spend more than two or three hours painting a subject anyway because it gets so different. You're better off coming back. Than so when you're, working, when you're working outside, you start a painting outside. You have, you've established the light sources and so on, mm -hmm. and the light is gone. You come back here, can you then finish the piece here? Uh, a lot of times I'll start a painting and do half of it or 70-80% and then take take a bunch of reference photos, come back and finish it in my studio. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask know. you about that. Yeah. Uh, I can remember as a kid thinking that it was cheating if you took a picture of something and you, and you copied it. But how do you use photographs in your work? Well, one thing you need to remember, uh, artists need to remember, is that you don't uh, you never, you're never there to reproduce anything. Even when you're out in nature, you're not there to reproduce what you're looking at. You're there, you're there to really interpret that scene your own way. So whether you're working from a photo or from plein air, it really doesn't matter. As you mentioned in one of your pieces there, a tree was in the way, and you said, no, I don't I need that tree. Yeah, you just move, you know, you have a, you have a license as mm -hmm. an artist if it hasn't expired. <laughs> to uh, to uh, manipulate the to piece do whatever you, you need yeah. to do because it's not you know it, it's and I and I'll, I like to tell this story uh, I when I first started as I said I used to you know I had the gallery in, in Gloucester very early in my career and I used to paint outdoors every day and this was before digital cameras mm -hmm. you know oh yeah it was twenty years ago and I used to go out and I would choose a scene and I would paint and then I would take a whole roll of film, 24 pictures roughly of that scene and go to the one hour photo, get my photos, to, you know, mm -hmm. go grab some lunch and come back, get my photos, go back to my studio and I would tape up the pictures around my desk and I would work on my painting and finish it and uh, it became, you know, pretty comfortable. And then one day I'm painting and I realize I, I forgot my camera, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, in the beginning, I mean, you're like a baby without the blanket. Right. You're like, wow, <laughs> you know, True. what am I going to do? And then, you, you know, I, I realized what difference does it make if this painting looks like that? It doesn't. No, it doesn't. What's important, and you should always remember this as a painter, it's always about the painting. It's never about whether this painting looks like that, unless you're doing a commission or something like that. But generally, when you're when you're doing a painting, it's it's all about you interpreting the scene, and it's never about you know nobody's gonna notice whether this looks like you're you know, not a camera, are you? No, it's no. not. It's not about that. So 
You're never there to reproduce exactly. So uh, you can use photos for reference and so forth, and that's what you do. You know, you're never you're never there to try to copy and reproduce exactly mm -hmm. what you. You're working on a piece right now for a special exhibit. Is that correct? Yeah. Can I, you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, I, I'm a member of the uh, Mystic Seaport Gallery down in Connecticut, and they're a wonderful gallery, international. Every year they have an international show, and they choose. I think about 90 pieces uh, from around the world. They get four or 500 mm -hmm. submissions. <clears throat> so uh, fortunately, I've been in it, I think, every year for the past five or six years. Uh, but this is a uh, annual submission, and I'm working on this piece of Gloucester that I uh, started a few weeks ago. And that's a, a compilation of my idea of Gloucester, really. Mm -hmm. Your idea of Gloucester. Yeah, and right. different, you know, mm -hmm. photos I've taken, but what I think about when I, when I think about Gloucester, you know, I love Gloucester, and that's, that's a, a, uh, the railway marine uh, scene over there with the... When I, was, when I was here the other day and I was looking at this new piece you're working on, I came back today to be surprised to see that you have put some figures in this yeah, work. Yeah. Uh, did, did you intend to do that all along, or is that something you just uh, decided on later? Uh, no, I, I thought I probably would. Mm -hmm. You know, I have I have a building, as you can see, and there's some light coming out of the building, and these figures standing there with the light hitting them. You know, so mm -hmm. it's, figures always make a painting more interesting. You know? They do. I know you all, you always, enjoy figure paintings yeah, as well. Yeah, they always. Uh, which brings me to another piece I'd like to talk about, and this is the charcoal portrait you did over here. Can you tell us about this? Uh, yeah, and that's how you were inspired to do it. And as I said, I, I started uh, with Robert Cormier, who was really a master portrait painter. He, amongst other things, he painted uh, landscapes and seascapes and so forth. But he did, he he loved portraits, and he he did many many portraits of judges and you know officials. Uh, but uh, anyway, we had models all the time. And this, this was a, a young woman named Faith, who was, I think, 18 or 19 years old. Beautiful, beautiful young girl. Do you draw much in charcoal? Or is that something uh, you do? I don't do as much, much anymore, but yeah. I, I do love it. I yeah. love... What about pastels? You ever done pastels? No, I've never done pastels. I'm surprised you've done I've that. Tried, you know, yeah. yeah. I've tried it a few times, but I never really get into it. There's just so much you can do. You know? <laughs> and I love yeah. watercolor. Yeah, I love yeah. oil. Totally get it. You can't, you totally can't do it. it all. So, well, Speaking yeah. of watercolors, I want to pick up another one here. This is actually a print. This is a reproduction of a painting uh, of Gloucester. This is, it's an interesting story. This, this ship is the sister ship to the Andrea Gale. And when I painted this, I was doing a series of uh, paintings of uh, this. This is called the Lady Hope uh, for Billy Tyne's sister, who is the captain of the Andrea Gale that went down. She asked me to do a painting for her of the ship. And I did several. I, I love this one in particular because it has the Capon Ice Company and the paint factory in the background. And this is... And this was uh, sold to uh, Gloria Estefan. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Gloria Estefan came into the port one night uh, in Rocky Neck. She was in a big uh, ship from the Cari uh, Panama, actually, the government of Panama owned the ship. And at night, she took a walk around Rocky Neck with her secretary. Uh, and they came in the gallery and they they obviously liked that, but she didn't buy it on the spot. About an hour later, the uh, secretary came by and told me that she wanted Gloria it. liked it and bought it. So, so that was a nice, a nice surprise. But I had taken, I had done prints of it, and it's been a very popular print of mine. One of your ship paintings. We're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, this is a fun painting. This yeah. is right across the street from my. Uh, studio in Gloucester, right in the harbor. Uh, I just I love Gloucester Harbor. And I love the old working ships, and this is this is just typical. And the uh, city hall is in the background, so it's 
again, it represents Gloucester and the, you know, the fishermen. This was a Sunday morning action. That's, that's what I call the painting. Mm -hmm. So the boats were in. <laughs> this is a painting down, uh, that I did in Florida. Uh, it's called Captain Jake. And it's a, uh, it's at Sugar River Mills down there, just a great spot. You know, I'll, this is a shrimp boat, but it reminded me, funny, it reminded me of the Gloucester boats. And I just love the whole scene with the, uh, the old trucks in the background and, you know, just really fun. And I, I particularly love this gray that, you know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, Right. It's an accident. God loves you, and He gives you a beautiful oh. painting of it. But look at the beautiful yes. grays in there. Don't you think all paintings have accents in them that you have to take yeah. advantage of? Yeah, you just you know, especially in watercolor, I think. Especially in watercolor. Yeah. So uh, another thing, I think a lot of people have trouble with, uh, maybe an amateur painters or even professionals, is the idea of getting water to look like water. Mm. And you do you do a beautiful job of creating that reflectiveness in the water. It really feels wet. Mm. Really nice touch. Let's take a look at this ocean piece here, which is another yeah, this is painting of water. Look at how different and this is handled from the watercolor. This is an oil of uh, Bass Rocks in Gloucester, yeah. which I love. I've done, <laughs> Haiti always kids me that I have, uh, I have about a thousand paintings out there called <laughs> Bass Rock <Do> Surf. <laughs> But uh, this is Bass Rock Surf, and it's a, just a spot that I love, and I, I put a little schooner out there to, mm -hmm. to balance all this weight here, yeah. you know, in a beautiful yellow sky. Yeah. I, love, I love also the way you do the water, this, this darkish blue water out here as you come down, it's green. I'm sometimes totally mesmerized by watching what happens with ocean water and the different colors. Yeah. That are in the, it isn't just one color, it's many different colors, from yeah. blues to greens to aquamarines and so on. Lovely. You did a great, you do a lovely job with light, I think. But this piece down here with the ice um, on the water, too. This is, um, this is the uh, marsh in Essex. Uh, it's behind uh, Farnham's clam bar there. And... Uh, I drive back and forth to Gloucester on 133 all the time. So this was early evening. Uh, I stopped and, uh, and did this. It's beautiful pink sky against the cool. It's winter and it's cold, but it's very warm, warm painting, exactly. which, which I love to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you wouldn't think you could get the two elements in the one yeah. painting, but you do. That it's warm a challenge, sky and yeah. the trees and, and the, the warmth. The same it. thing here, you yep. know, in this, in this woods painting. Mm -hmm. uh, this is in Appleton Farms, uh, which I love, an area where we go walk the dog all the time. But it's, the sun was hitting the back trees. You can see that warm, beautiful warm light. Up against the dark light. trees in the foreground. Right, and this cool... Cool snow on the front, so yeah. lead you right in there nicely. Beautiful. And this last piece at the top? That little piece is a, a small uh, uh, painting I did on Island Road in Essex. Uh, it, Island Road is a beautiful road, a couple of miles long, and it goes be in between all the marshes. There's mm -hmm. a few homes down mm -hmm. there. But yeah. Beautiful scene. Yeah. And that particular spot, <clears throat> it's very funny. I always feel like someone set that up like a still life almost. <laughs> it's got those rocks sitting in the field and this tree grew out of it, so it's just beautiful. Yeah, I like what happens with the light on the rocks on one side and then yeah. on the other side the rocks are in dark. And that it's contrast all, yeah. is really nice. It's always about light. Mm -hmm. Always it is, about isn't it? creating yeah. a path yeah. of light through yeah. your painting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why is this why is this painting a one well, of your fun ones. This is a fun one because it, we were, you know, Katie, Katie, my wife Katie and I uh, walked the dog down on Cr Crane's Beach a lot. And we walked the dog and we were coming back and it was about four o'clock, you know, when it gets mm -hmm. dark. At, yeah. And this is the parking lot at Crane's Beach. So it's just, ah. you know, it's, it's interesting that it, we had this beautiful sky, but you can make this beautiful painting from really nothing, you know, from a parking lot. So it, you don't have to be in, in a spectacular spot to, to do a beautiful painting. Yeah. How long have you lived in this area now? Uh, I, I've lived in uh, Ipswich eight years. Eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I've been here like six, and I'm just 
overwhelmed by the beauty of this oh, town, it's, it's this wonderful. area. Yeah, it's a it, secret. It, yeah, it is. It really is a secret. Yeah, don't tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's very inspirational. Yeah. You don't know it till you live here. It's Absolutely. A great, great town. Couldn't agree yeah. with you more. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Paul George for inviting us thank you, into his studio thank today. You for and thank you. It's been a joy and a pleasure. As you can see, this is a very, very extremely talented artist. Come back and join us in exploring the arts.